I've been using the dart monkey over the last few days in search of the best strategy for it. And today I'd like to share with you my findings. As a result of me doing this, I would like to especially highlight that many builds in this game are viable, and the difference is the amount of work put into the same result. Once you know all the timings, economy management, and opponent playstyles, the game becomes very simplified, leaving room for growth in some very unique and interesting ways. Now the Dart Monkey is a tower that has a lot of memories associated with it. I remember playing some of the early games in class and meeting a lot of new friends that way. I'm not really a student no more, but I very much enjoyed playing this strategy due to the memories it brought back. Coming up with strategies for the best catapult placements and things of that nature. The Dart Monkey is perfect for someone who enjoys placing many towers down during a game, opposed to only having a few. With the advent of Season 2, the Dart Monkey finds its place near the early game as a strong first buy to establish your beginning economy, and helps transition into a solid mid to late game with other synergistic towers. In my test, there have been many rounds where I would have multiple popping villages set up, defending relatively easily into the mid to late game, which feels pretty satisfying compared to the standard Dartling Gunner build you see almost every game. The bread and butter primary win condition is a triple fortified mode rush on round 18, usually done by leveling your economy to 1000 per cycle by round 17, buying nothing on round 17, and then dumping around 4 to 6000 into fortified MOABs. The very popular Dartling Gunner has a large amount of trouble dealing with this rush, and now when I see Dartling, I get excited since so many of them are unable to properly prepare for this attack. Now before we dive into the core of this video, I'd like to give a brief thank you to this commenter. My primary strategy was originally just a dart monkey village and an interchangeable late game slot. However, after testing this commenter's recommendation of mortar, the best dart monkey team composition in season 1 now seems to be a combination of the dart monkey, the mortar, and either the ninja and the sniper as the third. These build paths and more I'll cover in a later section of the video, but for now we go on to the meta builds for the dart monkey and a summary of its playstyle. Dartling Monkey can usually be seen expressed in a few different ways, either as an early game starter tower, or as an ability to use in the mid to late game to get a large amount of on-demand super monkey damage when defending against rainbow rushes or blimp pushes. The playstyle involves a large amount of clicks and keyboard presses, especially in the early game due to the nature of the Dark Monkey being a highly cheap and placeable tower, allowing the player to buy many in the first few rounds. Now in the games I've played, I'm usually pressing a lot more buttons, often to achieve the same results as one of the other players, especially when they're using dart monkeys. Properly placing a bunch of monkeys early game, while also trying to manage the timing of my economy, can be quite a hassle sometimes, especially when compared to the current meta of going against a simplified dartling gunner, and especially against early aggressive opponents. Now successful attempts of the dart monkey strategy do feel pretty good however, and it feels very rewarding due to the nature of how it's played. It's very high engagement and high interaction base, and it can be very enjoyable at times, and very pleasing to look at the different monkey villages I've built to be my opponent, or just the sheer amount of monkeys on screen sometimes. Now for the early game, usually around rounds 1 to 5, a strong start to begin with is placing 4 dart monkeys down, getting them all upgraded to 1-1-0, one, one, getting a 5th dart monkey to a 3-2-0, and then a few more needed depending on the map. After you have your dart monkeys placed, you can transition into your support towers such as a village or a ninja or things such as your hero, and then begin your transition into the mid to late game economy. Now round 6 through 11 is usually around the time that I want to get my Oban and my magic monkey down, usually a ninja, or if I'm not running a magic monkey, I'll take a different hero and run sniper for economy, if it's a higher tier and I think it's going later than round 30. Now if you're running a village, you want to make sure you get your camo before round 12. And another important balloon to watch out for is lead that appears at round 10. To counter this, you can get a juggernaut, pair with an alchemist, a bomber tower, or something like a mortar. Now rounds 12 to 18 is usually when I start stacking my mid game towers, whether that be snipers, ninjas, or another support unit like a mortar, boomerang, or even monkey ace. Usually around this time it's also valuable to saturate the radius of the village if you're running it. Going the top path buffs all the monkeys in the radius, and so once you have that buff purchased it's good to fill out the rest of the radius so all of the monkeys get the buff, stacking it exponentially. Now usually around 17 I'll want to have my economy to at least a thousand, and then at round 17 I'll stop purchasing things and save up at least 4,000, and then as soon as round 18 starts I'll send two to three fortified moabs. This strategy is very powerful against the current Season 1 meta and you'll get a lot of victories just by surviving to round 18 and then sending 3 of these at round 18. 
if there's any major metric to winning this game, I think it's a thousand economy by round 17, and then three fortified mobs around 18. Those are your two stat checks. Now round 20 and onward, I usually tech into my late game towers, be it the ninjas stacking bomber ninjas, be it stacking the bottom path wizard monkey, bottom path super monkey, or other late game options. Now it's good to know which rounds are of importance that'll win you games and that'll lose you games, but it's also important to know the thought processes behind the specific tiers of the towers that you're using. That way you know when to best use them and what they're effective at. For the top path, it's usually good to get this early instead of targeting to last. It's also worth investing into already placed monkeys as opposed to placing new ones unless you're trying to fill up the buff radius of one of your villages, just as a general rule. Now the catapult system is something I really enjoyed using, and playing this type of playstyle has helped me see many more paths to pop from balloons on the track. The bottom path camo detection is also very nice, due to the generally unorthodox placements of the catapult towers to get the most efficient paths for their spikes. They are usually outside of the village detection range for camo. So having built-in camo detection can be very powerful, especially against the round 12 camo lead rush that some players do. This build also has the ability to hold against the common round 12 purple camo rush due to the nature and power of these catapults. The power of the top path generally begins to fall off around 18 once mobs start popping up, unless you go very heavily into it towards the tier 5 or have it buffed up a large amount. Where you can consider the top path as the early game option, the middle path can be considered the mid to late game option due to its very powerful ability. Specifically where it rears its head is around round 19 as an option for defending against most blimps. Now most of the time, before round 18, there's not an extra 8,000 economy to put into the ability if you're against a good opponent. However, shortly after round 18, it can become a very powerful solution to any type of MOA push that your opponent might be thinking of. There's also a bug in this version of the game that allows the top path catapults to be buffed by the Super Monkey Fan Club ability, leading to a juggernaut catapult with attack speed higher than a Super Monkey. To do this in the current version, you activate the ability and then level up the top path. It's like a dartling gunner with juggernaut bullets and I wish it worked like this naturally without the bug, because this is dope. Now the bottom path is really good for natural camo detection, or when not running a submarine or other early game camo detection. An early crossbow buy can also be done in place of building a large amount of starting monkeys on maps that have lesser room or not enough space to place everything down. Think of a crossbow monkey as multiple combined smaller monkeys into one, and the top path juggernaut as just line damage against double pushes. Now that you know the thought processes of the different types of build paths for this monkey, I'm now going to go into the tower synergies and other types of towers that work really well with the dart monkey. Starting with the village, the village is the dart monkey's natural synergistic support unit. The village top path provides large amounts of attack speed and peers, and it stacks incredibly well with the dart monkey's small hitbox placement, and it allows it to buff well over 9 at a time, getting extreme value out of the cost of the buff, and the middle path also enables camo detection to provide more economic value to the dart monkeys that are invested around it. Now the boomerang makes this playstyle rather interesting since both monkeys can play as either early game towers or mid to late game towers. You have a couple different options when running this set. You can do early dart monkeys into mob press boomerangs or you can do early glaive boomerangs into the fan club dart monkeys. Both of these options are very very solid and this build feels very consistent and very capable of defending against many different types of pushes due to both of these monkeys being low cost and having a wide array of popping options, from camo detection to lead and more. Now for the sniper, the sniper is one of the goats of the patch. It can give extreme amounts of early game economy, it can let you continuously send large amounts of blimps late game, and it can almost permanently stun all types of mobs that come your way. The sniper is a very powerful unit, extremely economically viable, and in season 1 the sniper is one of the best things to have on your team, especially for the mid to late game. The cheap cost of the dart monkey makes it easier to get your early game sniper economy set up as well, leading to a very smooth ramp playstyle, much like the other types of towers. Low cost towers generally have higher actions per minute, but smoother curves in going into the early to mid to late game transitions. Now onto the ninja. The ninja has been one of my personally favorite towers ever since this game came out. I've got maybe four or five videos talking about different ninja strategies that I'll link in the description. And the ninja pops its head up here again today because it's also a very good tower for season one. And it works very well with a dart monkey. 
The bottom path bomber ninja is able to pop lead balloons, and on top of that the caltrop spikes stack very nice, has a buffer against any pre moa brushes. One of my favorite strategies is the spike factory, but with only three team slots, the ninja compensates for that, giving a solid buffer for any type of early game economy greed. Shinobis also stack very very well into the mid to late game with a cost of only 2000 and running Ocean Oban to act as a pseudo shinobi in the early game due to its natural pierce and shinobi effect for magic monkeys. All of this can stack into a very strong consistent power curve. The top path ninja can also be a viable option to just help further support the early game against an aggressive opponent. However, the middle and bottom path seems to be more efficient towards the money that you put into it for the early to mid games. Now the mortar tower was something I was already experimenting with before I started experimenting with the dark monkey and it's a tower that I believe the next best strategy is going to be made about because I've been very much enjoying this. The dark monkey and mortar is currently one of the few strategies that can defend against a fortified double Z on G rush at rounds 22 and on and against fortified BADs in the rounds 30 plus. The bottom path tier 4 mortar removes its fortification and multiple super monkey ability groups can do incredible amounts of damage. Now I'm currently unsure whether or not the ability boosted dart monkeys are able to receive the magic monkey buff that Oban gives due to the original tower being a primary monkey opposed to a magic monkey. However the super monkey is a magic monkey so further testing is required to see if the dart monkey turns into a magic monkey briefly when it's buffed to receive the buff of Oban or if it stays as a primary, you get what I mean. Anyways, the Dart Monkey can be very entertaining when you would like to place down a large amount of towers in your games. This nature also causes it to be a more click intensive monkey to use. However, this type of playstyle can be more entertaining in some cases due to the high energy APM gameplay. It can fare well both as an early game unit and as a general cleanup popping unit to pair with the late game towers such as the Super Monkey or Ninja. And overall, I found it enjoyable to game using this tower. However, going against other strategies such as the Dartling almost every round at the time of recording can feel a bit off knowing that the amount of buttons I need to press is a lot more than the other player has to press to achieve the same result. Using the Dart Monkey, however, reminds me greatly of playing older BTD games and using them and some of the many faces and experience I had. Stored away in my memory for years, only to be brought back by a digital catapult man by a monkey. You know what I mean? But it's fun, I like it. It's good memories. Now for some community shout outs, I've created a series titled Best Strategy with the variable in the middle changing for every single monkey and tower that's in the game. I'll be covering many different metas, their play styles and more. So expect to see more content like this and expect it to refine over time as I do it. Now I'd also like to thank this other commenter for the support. It's very motivational to know that my work for this game is paying off and that these videos and series are helpful to others. I'd also like to ask the community their thoughts about this other commenter's idea. Are there any specific towers you'd like me to cover when first creating this series? I plan on making all of them, honestly. Like a 26 video set of every tower in BTD Battles 2. But if there's any you would like expedited or seen before the others, you know, I can prioritize that if needed. Otherwise, I'll be doing my thing, you know how it goes. Now the algorithm also loves engagement, so please feel free to interact with other commenters and to suggest other potential content to put on the channel. I'd also like to mention 